I went to that first one, I thought to myself, yeah, I don't know if this is for me. But then once I went, I was like, yeah, this is great. Get to meet new people. And every ACE that the Phoenix chapter has, we always have new people that show up. And it's very beneficial for folks that are in the Alaskan ecosystem as an end user, or even as a Jira admin. When I went to my first ACE event, and then I was like, I want to go to more of these. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Summer of Atlassian. Today I have Summer, a Phoenix Ace leader, and we're gonna we're going to get to know Summer a little bit better. Um, in fact, Summer, I think I really only know three things about you, so I'm looking forward to this conversation. I think it's gonna be a blast to get to know uh, some amazing people that are doing some pretty cool and amazing things in the Atlassian community. So, Summer, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Alex, for having me. Really appreciate it. So. As I mentioned, I know three things about you. One, you live in Phoenix. You're one of the ACE leaders. <laughs> Two, that you went to the team conference for the first time. And three, you work for CSAA. So in a particular order, why don't we dig deeper into each of those and then kind of see where the conversation takes us? I'll start with uh, the Phoenix ACE. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I, the way I got involved in the Phoenix ACE is actually an interesting story. Um, I saw that the Phoenix Ace was lagging a little bit and um, the amount of Ace events that they were having, both, both virtual and in, in person. Um, and so I decided that I would reach out and see if I could help. I know that uh, Derek, who's the main Ace leader in Phoenix, he was struggling a little bit um, to get events planned and to get people to the events. Um, and it was not as successful as it could be. Um, and so actually, um, Bob Wen and I, we stepped in and decided to help out uh, the ACE. And I think it's been a lot more successful now since there's so many hands in the cookie jar, so many people helping out, so many people um, to take the pressure off the one ACE leader. And then um, I know you interviewed Josh for your, um, your last um, podcast. And um, so he's actually one of the new ACE leaders in Phoenix. So that's great that I get to work with Josh as well. And how long have you been doing this for? Not very long, just for just mainly this year. I've been an ACE leader. Um, I was a, been a community leader for quite some time. Um, community leader for almost two years. In August, it's been two years. So I started online, um, started just answering questions and um, hanging out in the community a lot, doing a lot of the water cooler chats and talking to a lot of people, meeting a, a bunch of new people. And I, um, and so I was really involved there. Um, and then I decided to get more involved in the Phoenix chapter when I went to my first ACE event. And then I was like, I want to go to more of these. These are so cool. I love these events. I want to go to more. How can I get more involved in how can I um, help to plan more of these events if that's what it takes? Because I really want to go to more of them. So that's that's kind of how that happened. Awesome. Yeah, I still remember my very first ACE event. I think they were still called the UAGs back then. Um, my, my first one would have been in sometime early 2017 um, in San Diego, California. So definitely a special place. <laughs> Um, when you go to your very first ACE event. And if you haven't, if you're watching this and you've never been to an ACE event, definitely check out, um, what is it, just ace.atlassian.com or what, what's the URL? Community.atlassian.com. Community.atlassian.com. But also ace.atlassian.com will take you there. Yeah. A lot of times on the community, though, there are a lot of ACE events that are in any article you go to, they're always on the left-hand side. Um, and so you can go and see like the most common ones and then you can go sign up for one. Yeah. yeah. You can also and then, for social media. We usually put them on LinkedIn. Uh, we post them on a bunch of social media applications. Yeah. So uh, there's lots of ways to uh, join an ACE. And it's very beneficial for folks that, that are in the Alaskan ecosystem as an end user, or even as a Jira admin, because you're either going to find other admins that are struggling, having the same problems as you. They're going to be more than happy to chat with you. Or you're going to learn something from the presentations because usually these ACE events have some sort of a presentation element to it, right? You're not just there to like hang out and chit chat, but there is like a at least learn something type of effort. Um, and or you're going to go there as a maybe you're new to Jura and you're going to find other people that are also new to Jura, right? And, and you just be able to. It's a very community driven platform. So definitely check one out. So what's been your favorite memory so far of being an ACE 
uh, involved in the ACE program? I would say team, but we'll get to team later. We'll but, to um, <laughs> I think I think my favorite memory is probably that first ACE that I went to you um, after I, I guess, technically became a co-lead. Um, and um, I got to really help out. And the one thing that I took ownership of kind of that I kind of like to do was set up the swag table and help <laughs> set up food and help do everything. But it was my very first one. And I was like, this is really cool. I really want to get more involved in this. And I really want to continue to do it, do this. When I first started and I went to that first one, I thought to myself, yeah, I don't know if this is, this is for me. But then once I went, I was like, yeah, this is great. Get to meet new people and Every ACE that the Phoenix chapter has, we always have new people that show up. Funny story, the one that you were just at in Phoenix, there was a lady who walked in and she sat down at the table while we were eating and I looked at her, I was like, I know her. And so after the event, she came up to me and she was like, do you know who I am? And I was like, I, you look so familiar, who, who are you? And so she told me who she was and I worked with her at the very first company I worked in out of college. Small world, right? <laughs> yeah, completely. I hadn't seen her in years. And it was just like, she just showed up to an ACE event. And apparently she was at team and she had seen me on social media advertising Phoenix ACE events. And um, and then she said, I'm going to find Summer one day. And she said, I cannot find you at team anywhere. But then I was like, I got to go to this event because I know Summer will be there. <laughs> so she showed up. So, yeah. really cool. so I made a I made a, a connection with someone I had had a connection with in the past. So yeah, you just never know what's going to happen at these ACE events. So yeah, great memories for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and I know we'll talk about teams in a second, but before I forget, um, a very similar story, not to me, but to one of the people that were with me at this year's team, we're walking around. I had just ran into um, Scott, the co-founder. I took a little selfie with him. And my friend, she like ran into this lady who actually works at Atlassian. She's like an uh, account manager for like super high profile enterprise accounts. And um, turns out they went to high school together. Wow. <laughs> They're like in their late 30s, early 40s now. So it's not, high school wasn't like a minute ago, right? It was like a couple minutes ago. And they wow. still recognize each other. And that little spur of serendipity got us like, we got to crash to like, super exclusive party on Wednesday <laughs> and it's just like the amount of just like cascading uh, effects that I had from just again just randomly seeing someone that you hadn't seen in decades or forever um or can only happen at an ace or at last year event <laughs> yeah I was shocked when it happened to me so yeah great great things you, come from you me, gotta so. wait until like celebrities from the Phoenix area start showing up to ace events <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're I, you're contributing to that. You're helping Josh and I become celebrities. I guess I know, right? Well, you keep hanging out with the the Jira Life crew. You, we, I mean, with Josh with this new podcast, right? It's going to be a whole competing thing now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> you're going to have to start your own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> Any tips that you would have for folks that are like maybe kind of where you were, um, like you know, itching to get involved, but maybe you're shy, you're an introvert, you don't know who to talk to, like any. What, what advice, recommendations would you give people to, that are in your boat that want to get involved? I would at, tell them to start on the online community. That's where I started. It's a little bit more of a comfortable place, you know, because most it's just an online community. But you do meet a lot of people, especially if you go to, you, you do like the water cooler posts or like the miscellaneous Mondays and the um, fr fun Fridays and like those kind of posts you'll start seeing the same recurring people in these um, posts that you can participate in. And, you know, try to see if you have some questions to ask and see if a community leader ask, answers your question. And if they do, you know, thank them and then go and ask a question, go and start answering questions um, for other people and trying to help out. That's kind of how I got my start on the Atlassian community was um, I had a question one day and I asked a question, this was many years ago. And then I thought, you know what? Someone took the time to answer my question. I want to give back. I want to help answer other people's questions. And then I became a rising star. And then one of the community managers reached out to me and asked me to become a community leader. So you would think that, you know, this job that we do, which is mostly volunteering, um, is tough and it's hard, but it's really not. It's very rewarding. Um, I'm super passionate about it. 
And it's a really easy thing to get involved. If you put your hand up and say, I want to get involved in the Atlassian community, no one will turn you down and you will make <laughs> the best friends ever. And you, you'll really feel like you're part of something. You'll really feel like involved and like you're really a part of something important and you'll make lifelong friendships. And I've made some really good friendships with some really smart people. Um, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful, but <laughs> you said something that 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 hurt me a little bit. <laughs> what hurt you a little bit? <laughs> I don't know if you so I don't know how much you hang out with Bob. What let, let's maybe let's talk about Bob a little bit. Um sure. how how long have you been friends with Bob? <laughs> I met Bob probably right after I started in the online community. So maybe what was like how long has years. that been? Two, three, four years? Two, two about two years ago. Two years, okay. So Bob's a great guy. I love Bob. And totally. as you know, Bob is my accomplice. He's my one of my partners in crime. And I spent a lot of time with Bob. <laughs> and Bob gets to see a lot of the behind the scenes that most people don't get to see, right? Because again, the, just the sheer amount of time that I spent with Bob offline or not, not in the public face, right? And um, I've been trying to become a community leader forever. Well, not really forever, for at least two years. And <laughs> every time that I asked, they wouldn't let me in. They kept saying no to me. You're already a creator. They know this was even before the creators program. This was just like me just trying to. The first time I, I had applied, right? They're like, I just didn't have enough answered. I had not answered enough. That happened to me. Questions. That happened to me. <laughs> so, that happened to me. It did. I got denied the first time. Like Monique reached out to me and she was like, you should become a community leader. You answer all these questions and participate in all these, you know, forums and you, you know, answer all the the uh chats and and i was like okay and so i applied and they did de they declined me even though i was recommended to be a community leader <laughs> by a community manager they still declined my application and they said but, you need to go out there and like participate more in the community a more. <laughs> you're not doing a good enough job and i was like okay um and then at that point i really thought about it too i thought should i even continue with this maybe i should just just keep doing what I'm doing, but I don't necessarily need any reward for it necessarily. And so I kept answering questions and doing things and just doing the natural stuff that I was doing on the community before I became a leader. And um, and then all of a sudden they said, you should apply again. And so then I applied again and then they accepted me as a community yeah. leader. So Why for one, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy I that I'm not mean to offend you, oh, Alex. I'll help you become a community leader. They would know. Like, the bar is high. Like, I was like, I, I even sent them a letter, right? Because to me, a community leader is so much more than either hosting the events and or answering community questions. Or specifically, the community questions are on community.lasting.com, right? Like, I feel like if there's anyone in the community, right? Like, the Jury Life is, like, this huge public community forum, right, that we try to do, right? The like just my YouTube videos, right? And at the time when I was applying, I had like well over 500 videos on YouTube. <laughs> and I'm like, how is, how is like, I, I literally sent them an itemized list of like, here's everything I'm doing for the community. I'm doing the Ace Life Learning. I'm going to Ace Events as a speaker. <laughs> um, I got, now it's like close to 800 videos. We're leading the Jira Life, right? Like I gave them like a list of everything. And they're like, yeah, you're just not answering enough questions. <laughs> Why is it all about questions? So this is one of the things that I was super happy. We're going to go to team now. So this is one of the things I was super happy in the community day is that they said, you know, we're not going to base the program anymore on if you're an online leader and if you're an events leader. Or even you know, a creator. <laughs> or a creator. What if you're all of them? What if you're right. two of them, right? What if you're not? Them, like me. <laughs> And I find a lot of leaders are not just one, actually. They're either helping out with events or they're they're doing creative stuff like you are. Or like, I should get points for this. Here I am on your podcast. Yeah, right. I'm kind of being a creator right now, right? Right. <laughs> so, you know, these things should, you know, count for something um, in the program. And um, so I'm, I'm glad that they're kind of revamping the program and making it more um, inclusive. So, yeah. but I did but, see that you got the creator swag at the, at the leader day. So they must consider you as something. Yeah, no, that was, that was kind of why I talked about Bob because if, and when Bob watches this video, I know he's going to be like, 
cringing back there <laughs> because <laughs> I, I, I mean, for a year, right? I, I almost got to the point where I was like, you know what? Even if they make me a leader at this point, I'm just going to say no. <laughs> Cause like out of spite, <laughs> it was just so mad. I was like, I like embody the, the meaning of community as much as I possibly can. You do. And it's, I, and it's I, still I, not I, enough. <laughs> yeah. I agree with that. I don't know. I literally, you just enlightened me because I literally had no idea that they turned people away, especially more than once. That makes no sense to me. Especially yeah. when you stand up there at the leader day and they're like, we only have 300 leaders for all these millions of community members. I mean, that really doesn't. Yeah, the math doesn't quite check out. But no, anyway, so And they're like, we need more, out. bring people. And then I went to the university at, you know, I don't know if you know I did this, but like at team at the university and um, and community booth, we did a me and Larry Brock. Um, we did a, a forum, like a little like the creators forum, but we did one about being a community leader. And the whole purpose of it was to get more community leaders because we need more leaders for the amount of members that we have. And then I find out they're turning people away like you. That's shocking to me. <laughs> It, it, it's been an uphill battle. So as soon as I got the award, right? Remember that uh, community yeah. award, right? As soon as I got that one, Bob's and and Ronnie's first, like they they didn't even say congrats. Like their first thing was like, you can't complain about not being a community leader now. <laughs> yeah, maybe you just never got the email, Alex, that they accepted. maybe. <laughs> you know, it's so funny you say that because my dream school was UCI, um, UC, uh, University of California, Irvine, and I, that was like. That was the school I wanted to go to, but I'm the first gen in my family to go to college. And so at least back then there was the SATs and the SAT twos that you had to take. Yeah. I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. ACTs? The, the ACTs? Yeah. I think those were a thing, but I th at least as far as I remember that it was either the SAT or the ACT that you had to take. But then there was these subject tests that you had to take that were much more, that were more specific. And the UC system requires a high SAT score or ACT and then the subject level tests. I didn't know about them. I took the SAT the last day I could possibly take it before applications were due. <laughs> right? None of, none of my friends thought it was like useful information like hand out or give out to, to their peers and tell them like, hey, we're thinking about college. You might want to think about this test you got to take. It. Right? So I only applied to to the Cal States here in the California state system, which only required the SATs, but not the extra tests. So I never um, I never applied. And fast forward like six or seven years, I was going through my drawers one day as I was moving. I, I moved out of my parents' house and I moved uh, to St. Louis, Missouri, and I found a letter. Just lost. That was from like an acceptance letter from the UC system that I got in on something. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like the one you, never knew? <laughs> you didn't know you got accepted? No, I never got that letter. <laughs> so I was like, it's so funny when you're like, maybe you missed the email. I was like, it's happened before. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming now that you told me that story, Alex, you got accepted as a community leader since you wanted a community leader. I, I am. So, well, I'm not a community leader. I didn't officially get formally accepted as a community leader, right? I'm coming in through the creators program. But now that we've converged as a champions, I am a champion. Sure. And so so that's how I'm coming in. But yeah, I'm not officially, I, I wouldn't be the traditional online and I would not be the event one either. I'm just the creator that is now the champion. So are there other creators that are not community leaders? Not any, well, there were many, right? There there were quite a few, but now since they, uh, as a team, they've kind of just merged it into one, which I'm so happy for, right? Because again, yeah, e even... And, and a special shout out to like Lauren Siegel, right? Because she was like my cheerleader, like the greatest advocate of, hey, this, because there was, there really was two paths, right? And um, I forgot what post, I made a post on LinkedIn, like maybe, maybe February or March timeframe where I'm like, I think it must have been February when, I don't know if you know, but I did like a little West Coast tour and with, I partnered up with Mark yeah. Cruz from Alaskan and did the whole thing. And so I was like, I may not be a community leader, but that doesn't stop me from doing things, right? <laughs> and immediately Alaskan was like, what things are you trying to do that the creators can't do that the leaders can? So again, I gave him an itemized list of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they enjoyed that. <laughs> Uh, but it was really good feedback, right? So Lauren kind of took that back, and I think that's what it naturally evolved. Where they must have taken it back up the chain, and, and 
and talk to Stephanie um, Grice about like, hey, like this doesn't make sense. Why, like, why are they different, right? Because, like, the the weirdest thing for me was um, I do the Atlassian Community um, live learnings. I'm sure, I'm sure you're yeah, aware, of, right? Amazing, yes. Yeah, and those are hosted through Bevy. Right. Right. And so I have the ability for that quote unquote chapter, the live learning chapter, I can go in and create events and edit the ones I, that I host, right? So but you're the Jira Life, leader. sorry? So you're a nice leader. Well, hold up. <laughs> the Jira <laughs> Life, right? The Jira Life, uh, Bob and Ronnie were like, hey, Sajit is doing this thing with the quiz whiz where if you attend a quiz whiz, you get credit for going to the quiz whizzes, right? And they're broadcasted on the community website. And so we're like, well, the quiz whiz is no different than the Jira Life, so let's just get the Jira Life uh, officially recognized. And then they did. I, uh, I believe her name's Carolyn Park. She's like, okay, here, here's your new chapter. The Jira Life is officially recognized. You can now, we have bevy events, and um, people can sign up and get credit or whatever happens, right? And I'm like, cool. And so I, I send out a message saying, like, how can I modify the thing? And she's like, you can't. And I'm like, but I can't over here. And she's like, well, you can't over here because you're not officially a leader. And so that those things I was like, again, special thank you to Lauren. I like she I love her so much for like all the hard work. Her and um Andrew DeBell, right? Like from a creator's perspective, like they really came and like showed up and helped us like, get that equilibrium. Because now I can. Now I can do a lot of the stuff that the leaders can um could do before that I couldn't just do because I was a creator. Not, so not turning this into the Alex complaint show. But. <laughs> no, but I get your point, though. I mean, what really is the difference if the Phoenix chapter finds a speaker and we go and do a virtual event on Bevy and you doing the Jira Life? What, like, that's, there's no difference. We're both right. ace leaders. Yeah. No, I just, they wouldn't let me in. They wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> but well, I'm they do have access now. Yeah, I'm like a, a, a chapter that I'm glad I closed <laughs> because yeah. uh, fortunately, fortunately, we've been able to move on. And again, special thank you to the the leadership team there that managed the community program. I, I do think that they do take that. I felt very hurt, right? Um, it was frustrating at the time, but I, I'm I'm very happy that I was able to communicate with the right folks, and the right folks were able to go and advocate. and And I was like in tears, just so happy uh, at the team day. Or community day because I was like, man, this this was this makes it all better. <laughs> this makes it worth yeah. it. <laughs> You're like, yeah. this was a grind, and now I have the yeah. reward for it. So yeah, yeah, and congratulations on your award. That was super cool. Thanks. Very unexpected. Um, I, they had sent me an email telling me that they were interested in um that night. <laughs> Let me tell you that night instead. The night of the awards, I'm walking in, and I was already very close to the to those RSVP tables that they had at the front. And so I was one of the free people to, one of the first people to walk into us from that where they were clubbing at the front to that back <laughs> where all the tables were. And as I walked right past Lauren, Lauren's like, sit in the front. And so I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, go sit in the front. And like, they're like, like hawks, man. They're just like kicking everybody like, nope, you can't sit here. Nope, you can't sit here. Right. And I'm like, I don't, I fear rejection summers. Rejection is like one of the reasons why I don't do half the things that I don't do. Right. And so I'm like, ah, I don't want to get yelled at, especially since I already know that I'm walking on thin ice and like I'm not a community leader, right? And all that stuff. And I but go, Lauren, like, are you four community leaders? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So I'm like, Lauren, are you sure? Because like they're like kicking everybody out. <laughs> and she's like, You you can sit there, like go sit there. I was like, All right, but when they yell at me, I'm gonna come talk to you. <laughs> sure enough, they kicked everybody else out, but not me. <laughs> Um, very unexpected that that, that happened. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, but you're great. I mean, I liked me. I really enjoyed meeting you in person at team. And then, you know, in Phoenix, it was fun a couple of weeks ago in Phoenix. So, yeah, <laughs> thanks for coming out. I'm, it was a really good time. I'm so glad we did it then and probably not this week because, boy, it was 107. Toasty you wouldn't have liked it. It's brutal. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we trans transition over to team? So you've been in this e ecosystem for a couple of years. How is it that this was your first team? I was going to go to team last year and I would have got a free ticket as a community leader, but unfortunately my cat was dying and oh, no. I want to leave him at home, especially if he would have died while I was gone. And then my boyfriend would have had to deal with that. So, and I wanted to spend all the time that I could with him. So, um, so I didn't go last year. That's and a very good reason. 
One that yeah. I probably should have asked before I ask. <laughs> yeah. And then before that, I think it was just a matter of um, finances. Like none of my companies would pay for it. Um, I tried to go when I was at Hawaiian Airlines, but they were like, okay, here's the deal. We already pay for you to go to Hawaii like six times a year. So we're not going to pay for you to go to team. So, and it was really expensive for me at the time. So I was like, yeah, okay, I guess I'm not going, but yeah, me and one of my, uh, colleagues, one of my other um, <clears throat> business analysts I work with, him and I like fought the battle to go to team back then in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it just didn't work out. <laughs> so that's why, unfortunately, but I'll be going every year now. I even yeah. told my wife, I'm like, you don't want to pay for it? That's fine. I'll take FTO and I'll pay for it. But I'm going to go every year now. So yeah, no, I, I had a, well, I wouldn't say I had a similar experience, but I had my company pay for me for 2023. Fortunately, I'm the only Jira admin, so it's like it was a very easy sell. But uh, for 2024, I was like, you know what? Um, I don't want to represent anybody. <laughs> I'm gonna go solo on this one. And um, I was fortunate enough that I got sponsors to to pay for pay for me to be out there. So special shout out to Resolution. <laughs> awesome. Um, for making that happen, and um, it, it helps when you have a supportive group of of folks in the Alaskan ecosystem that are that are there to support like the creators and, and the people that are you know putting the stuff out there. Yeah, for so, sure. Definitely yeah. sponsors Next year I'm walking there. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, but it's like three miles away from my house. So I'm walking there. There you go. Cool. Very cool. Yeah so rather than let me in or not like I, well, that's not too grabs but I'll definitely be walking. <laughs> the <front door>. Awesome. <laughs> I'm we'll excited here. I'm actually really excited it's not in Vegas next year because Vegas wasn't yeah. friendly to me twice now. I went to Vegas twice, once for team and once for a concert, and I got sick afterwards both times. And I'm like, Vegas literally makes me sick. Why is this happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm done with Vegas. So You're kind of like, my sister-in-law wants to go down to uh, Catalina this weekend, uh, the island uh, right off mm -hmm. the California coast here. And when I was in college, I had like three opportunities to go for free. Um, one of my professors had a student who made it big and was a multimillionaire and he had a boat and he would take a, take the students once a year to Catalina. And each of the three times, some life event happened that I just couldn't make it. Right. And when my sister in law was like, let's go to Catalina this week. And I'm like, I want to go, but I'm pretty sure the universe is telling me I shouldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't want to know what will happen if I do go, but there's a trend here. Yeah, there's there's a, yeah, three times, literally three times that, that I could have gone something like major. It wasn't like a little thing, right? Like it was huge. And I was like, oh, like I, I'm just not meant to go to Catalina. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can definitely understand the whole Vegas superstition thing. <laughs> it's real. Yeah. Especially so what was your favorite thing? Because I'm assuming you heard so many stories about team from previous years, right? It looks like well, they know the way back to 2019, maybe even 2018, right? And now that you go, like, what was your, were you surprised? Were you happy, excited? Like, what was your initial reaction there? I'm a, I was a little overwhelmed, to be honest with you, especially the amount of walking, but. Did you um, not watch my survival guide? I did. Okay. I did. Because I, I watched, said the walking. <laughs> So yeah, I watched both of them and I was like, I'm going to, I know this is going to happen, but when you're actually there and then you see how far everything, this is what I hope they fix in Anaheim. Like everything's so far away from each, from it, each other, you know, like there's sessions way out there in the hallway and then to walk back to you, the expo hall is quite a walk and then go back out for the keynotes. And I heard that in years past that the keynotes were actually in the expo hall. And I was like, why did they change that <laughs> just to make us walk more? I guess they're like, you guys need more exercise. Um, I, so I think it's a, it's a downward trend, though, because you will be walking more in Anaheim. I guarantee you. Yeah, I'm sure I've been there to the Anaheim Convention Center. Yeah, and, and especially there's no hotels there. So every yeah. hotel is a walkable hotel. So you're going to it's going to start from the hike from your bedroom to the expo. Or to the convention center. I'll prepare in advance for that. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that um, shocked me, which I don't know why I was shocked about, but because I should not have been, but so many people knew me and would like yell my name and would meet me and go, oh my gosh, it's you, Summer. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> so um, did I they recognize you from answering the questions in the community? 
online community? Yeah, ma mainly from the mainly from the online community. Maybe some coffee chats. A couple of people were like, "Oh yeah, you presented in the coffee chat about being a community leader." Um, and so I think just a lot of people knew who I was, but I had never met any of them. Um, and then for me too, I was I was so privileged and so happy to meet so many people. It was. Um, it was really, it was really great to meet all these people. I mean, I have this experience in my life, especially since COVID, of knowing so many people and never meeting them in person. I mean, I do this in my everyday life. All the people I work with in Arizona, I finally met after a year and like a little over a year of working at CSAA. And then there's still people like my boss, my very first boss at CSAA, she lives in Walnut Creek. That's where CSAA is headquartered, California, Northern California. I've never met her. I've never met my second boss. <laughs> like there's so many people I've never met. And I'm, and then, so it was just like that. But then I get there and it's like, I met all of them in a matter of like 24 hours. And so it was really, um, it was really exciting and, and really cool to just meet everyone that, I had talked to you and so many people helped me um, before I was a community leader, like answering my questions and helping me out with um, certain issues that I was having, um, things that I was trying to do to be creative in my job and not just of like Atlassian, but more like teamwork kind of things. Um, Mark Kruth had helped me out in, in, in the past. And then I just, then I ended up meeting all these people and it was the, it was the coolest thing ever. It was, it was so great just meeting everyone. And, and I got to um, ask him, how, how did you deal with the, like, what were your reactions to people coming up to you? Because I'm not going to lie. I had, I counted and I lost count after like 300 people. <laughs> right. And I was like, for every single one of those interactions, I'm like, they all would all come up and say like, Hey, thank you so much for the videos. And I'm like, Thing like you're wrong. like I had no idea what to say. But like, what were you telling people? Because now I'm curious. Um, I would just um try to re reciprocate and ask them something about themselves. Like, where what what's your involvement with it, Lassie? And why are you here? Who do you work for? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how I would deal with it when people would be like, Oh my gosh, Summer. I'm like, Oh hi, how are you? And I'd be like, I don't know who this person is. And then I'd yeah, like, that was that was my thing. Oh my gosh! And then I would act excited, but it was always a oh my gosh like look down at the back <laughs> some people i knew from videos and like picture your picture in, in the community is very important so um a lot of people i knew from pictures and whatnot and then um you know they would ask me like oh how are you doing how oh it's your first team how are you enjoying the team and i'm like this is amazing and um then i would ask them a question so that's kind of how i would deal with the uh like that little bit of uncomfortableness that would happen for a couple <laughs> seconds then i'd throw it back on them like how are you enjoying team who do you work for what are you that doing makes so much, I, i'm going to be so much better prepared for team next year now <laughs> <laughs> that's I what i do in comfortable situations is i ask someone a question like it just kind of I don't know, it sort yeah, of breaks the ice and then it gives you something that maybe if the way they answer your question, maybe you have something to relate to them on now. Um, and so that's, I, I use that as a tactic a lot in my life. That is such a great tip. Like, I just, I didn't even, like, I was a like deer in headlights. I'm like, I was just trying to get the time, the amount of time that I spent in the expo hall as like just an attendee out of the, the full two and a half days that it, it goes for, like, I probably spent an hour. The rest of the time was like, I had to be somewhere, I had to go somewhere, I had to, we were doing something. And it was like, go, 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 go. But it was like a lot of like, stop, 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 because people would say, hi, 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 hi. And I was just like, I had no idea how to react. And I was just like, I wasn't used to it because two years ago, um, when I went, I guess what well, would have been last year, not two years ago, but last year, fourteen twenty three, like two people recognized me, and that was it. But this year, it was like I told my wife because I took my wife and kids. And I told I remember telling my wife the first night, I'm like, I'm like, I'm kissing babies and like shaking hands all day long here. <laughs> you could take the Rodney approach too. You want to know what Rodney did? What did Rodney do? Rodney didn't know me when I met him, so I met him in the community leader day, and I was like, Oh my gosh, hey Rodney, it's it's the Jira guy. And he was like, Oh, hi. And then he did the look down thing. And he's like, Oh, summer. And I think he recognized that I attend a lot of you guys as, you know, the Jira life. And I put, I look always at the tag <laughs> flashes. I'm on the screen. And so he was like, um, how are you doing? And I was like, good. And he's like, um, 
Let me get you a pin. That was his thing. That was giving you give me, and he gave me the drill. I should probably do that too. So I should probably carry something with me to give out. I just it was so awkward for me. I had no idea how to handle it. And I'm I'm not for like small talk either. And so but yeah, now I'm kind of I'm gonna ask questions. Totally. <laughs> be fun. That and maybe give something out. See, I'm learning so much. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite one was Bob at the welcome reception on Monday night. Bob goes. Hey, Alex, let me introduce you to Stephanie. And I look at Stephanie. I'm like, hi, Stephanie. And I carry on about my business. Bob didn't bother to give me the details. That Stephanie is a freaking VP of community and learning. Yeah. <laughs> She's a pretty big deal. I'm like, Bob. So I, And so, again, that moment, I just said, hi, bye. And I was like, on about my business, right? And then the next day, it was like the Stephanie show. For like a good amount of the day. So that night, I was like, Bob, who the heck is this Stephanie gal? And he's like, how do you not know Stephanie? I'm like, because I'm not a community leader. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a similar thing happened with me, but it was Caroline in this situation. I saw Caroline and I took a selfie with her. I was all about the selfies at team. I took so many selfies. Um, and then I was... I was standing there and, and Carolyn's like, oh my gosh, Summer, it's so nice to meet you in person. I'm so sad you couldn't come last year. So I'm so glad that you're here. And I'm so nice to meet, it's so nice to meet you. I'm like, well, yeah, well, thanks for all your help. Like over the you know past year, like just yeah. getting situated and with the whole Phoenix Ace thing and all that. And she's like, can you just repeat that for my boss? And she's like, this is Stephanie, my boss. And I was like, oh, hi, Stephanie. I was like, Caroline's <laughs> awesome. So it was kind she's of cool. just like the she boss. She's like, the like, boss. She's yeah. like, she's up like there. Boss. And I'm like, guys, you got to like, for newbies like us, like, this is information that we got to like get in like a morning Slack message of like, here's how to survive team today. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Maybe that's what we got to do. So like, here's your itinerary for the day, the do's and the don'ts for today's yeah. agenda. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, man, but that, besides that, that I, I would say my other highlights of team were definitely all the things they do for the community leaders, which you were at all of them. So all the community leader events are amazing. Like getting to know everyone just in a community leader setting. Um, the community leader day workshop was great. Learning everything about all, all the new things that they're going to do in the community um, and all the things they're going to do for leaders. And of course, the happy hour was was fun. Bob and his sombrero and you know that was a load of fun and meeting everyone, meeting everyone, taking a bunch of selfies, and then. Um, the community leader dinner was amazing. I mean, that was How really was the food? I didn't even eat any of it. It was good. The food was actually good. And if you didn't get one of the, if you did not get one of the fortune cookie papers that was in the big fortune cookie dessert, there was papers. Um, they were very Vegas appropriate, I mm. should say. I'll have to send you a picture later of that. No, I I sat next to Sharif, right? Right. And then to my right was supposed to be Mike, but Mike never showed up. And so the whole time I was like, I cannot eat if I'm going to be sitting next to Mike. Because the last <laughs> thing I want to do is like, I don't know. I just, I, I took like little bites. I am not trained in the ways of, of food etiquette. <laughs> I'm left-handed. I am left-handed and the whole food etiquette thing, like the the way you 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 work your way in and the way you're like the way the waiter comes in to you and the way you place your cup is opposite for me. It doesn't work for me. My cup is always on the left hand side. It's supposed to be like on the right hand side. And I always start the opposite way. And it's just it's never it's never correct. So I've never had I've always been traumatized about like formal fancy dinners. And so I just I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna like have a little bite of this and a little bite of that. So I'd ate nothing. <laughs> Um, I don't it's always weird like with the family style. The family style always throws me off. I'm I'm I, I'm with you on that. I mean, where they just bring the food constantly, and then you take what you want, but then it's like maybe I want that thing, but it's way down there. Right, right. Like, oh, this is so confusing. <laughs> that's what I loved about Sheree. Sheree was just like, I'm gonna spin it. I'm gonna spin it. <laughs> it <was> just spinning. <laughs> nice <laughs> it was fun um but yeah uh, that, that was a, an interesting dinner that i wish i was like it was probably the most expensive dinner i've ever been to and i took like three bites of something 
hopefully I don't have to do that again. Um, or or hopefully next time I don't have the same pressure that I had this time. <laughs> that Although was a lot of pressure for you, especially after I'm sure the awards. Oh my gosh, I was in tears after. Like I, I was so overwhelmed, I had no idea how to react. Ray was like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> and I'm like, "No, not okay." I'm in shock. <laughs> it was. I um. I'm so honored. I would have been the same way. It was just such a surreal experience because like, I, I was telling Ray, I'm like, I'm not used to winning. Like, like things don't usually go. That's why I'm like, remember that fear of rejection that I told you earlier, right? I didn't even put myself out there because I just fear fear the rejection so much. So, had I like had to apply for this award, like I wouldn't have even been on. <laughs> like I wouldn't even thought about it, right? And but it's and it more of weird. an honor because you didn't apply for it. It just came naturally because everyone voted for you. Yeah, so thankful to everybody who watches and does everything right. It's um the only thing I can say it makes it makes it worth waking up at five AM on a Saturday and Sunday morning to record all the videos. <laughs> yeah. Because sure. um sometimes I feel like I'm just yelling at a little people on my on my computer screen. <laughs> so That's how I um, we put an event on and like it goes good, like the one that you came to. I was like, Oh, this feels good. This is nice. Like the event went well. We didn't get tons of people to show up, but we're getting better at getting people to show up. And um, it feels really good when you when you uh, run an ACE event and it goes successfully. So what do you think about like that? If we can spend a minute there, because that's super interesting to me. Like I went, as I mentioned, right, I went to my first community event in 2017. We had a hard time parking from how many people were there. Right. And like, I'm just wondering, like, what do you think needs to happen or what ideas are you guys brainstorming to get people to show up? So I've been talking to other community leaders, other ACE leaders about how they get people to show up to their events. And we've implemented some of them. There's a couple. I hope that the raffle that we did, because that was the first time we did that with the gift cards and then we raffled off all that stuff. We wanted to do like a lot of stuff at the beginning, so we all kind of contributed something to raffle off. So I'm hoping the word spreads on the raffles, because you know if you're going to give up your own time, uh, drive somewhere, especially in Phoenix, because this is becoming like Los Angeles with the traffic, and you're going <laughs> to spend your own time after work to go somewhere. You know, you might. It would be nice if you have the at least option to maybe win something, right? Um, the other thing we talked about is gamification. Um, so we, that was really cool with the mentee. So that was another thing that we had talked about that. I don't, I don't think the two were related where we did the mentee at the event, but if you try to gamify at least some part of your ACE event, um, I think that that might bring more people out. And <clears throat> I'm hoping since at the, I think three or four events I've been to now in Phoenix, there's always different people. Now there's a couple of people that are consistent, but then there's a couple of people that, or there's a lot of other people like at this one we just had that you were at, we, I hadn't seen most of those people. So I'm hoping that word will continue to spread. And, you know, just by word of mouth, we'll get more people. Then you add the gamification in, and then you add in the, um, the raffles. So I'm hoping word will spread. I also think another thing that we can do is we can get a little bit better at our descriptions of our events. You know, so when you put out a description, like I thought the one that we did for the Jira Life was like super exciting. Like you're, we're going to, you're going to be on a podcast literally on YouTube if you come to this event. Um, and so I thought that was really, that was great that we did that. I think we need to improve a little bit on our, on our descriptions and put it out there to people like, this is what you're going to get as a benefit by coming to this event. Yeah, those are some really good tips, and I, I hope other ACE event leaders watch this because um, I did this thing in February. The San Diego one was pretty good. We had there was like 16, 17 people there. Um, then we went to SF, but that's the home base, right? So it was like close to 100 people. So I wouldn't have expected anything less. But the LA one, the LA struggling. We we had like five people there, and so. It's it's interesting to see like the different tactics. Um, I was pleasantly surprised with the amount of people that were at the Phoenix one. Yeah, it was. We got a good turnout that night. That was a yeah. really good turnout, especially if you count the virtual and the in person. So yeah, I thought that was I think our best turnout so far. So at least we know what the things, couple of things that we have changed and the the things we are doing are working. 
Yeah, um, Mark Cruz is usually able to bring in a good audience as well, so it's always helpful. Yes. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> he promised us for October, but he's like, I Did don't he? love coming no. this summer. And I was like, mm, little do you know, in October, it's not really that much cooler, but... But not 107, so because it was 107 when I was there. I'm never going back in June, July, or August, or September. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> How do you guys live there? It's <laughs> the best question. My so, family's been there for 19 years, so I, I'm in no position to tell you. <laughs> when you when you go from the air, your air conditioned house to your air conditioned car to an air conditioned building back to the air conditioned car back to your air conditioned house, it's not too bad. I try not to spend a lot of time outside, and but I, I will tell you that you know. So I'm an Arizona native. I've lived here not my entire life because my dad joined the Air Force when I was five, and I lived all over the United States and abroad as a military brat growing up. When I was 18 years, 19 years old, I was in Okinawa, Japan. I had graduated from high school and I was like, I got to go start my life. See you guys. So I left my family and I came back here to Arizona. And I've only not lived here for one year um, where I went to Santa Monica and I lived there for a year. Um, but besides that, I've lived here. So recently, I think I told you about this, but recently I got to a point, I was like, I can't deal with the heat anymore. I am going on like two or three trips, um, like vacations in the summer is just not good enough anymore. So I bought a condo up north in Payson and I've gone up there every single weekend except Memorial Day since I bought it. Memorial Day was Phoenix Comic Con. So I went to um, it's called Phoenix Fan Fusion, but it's basically Phoenix Comic Con here. So I was here in the Valley for that. My brother came from New York and went with me. But every other weekend I go up to Payson. It's an 80 mile drive from my house and it's about 25 degrees cooler. That's not bad. Like 80 I, used to, I used to live about 75, 80 miles from my parents' house and I did that every weekend. Um, so that's, that's not a bad drive. It's a good, easy hour, hour and a half depending on yeah. traffic. But apparently yeah. you're becoming the L.A. over here. So, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Go up in the mountains with the pine trees and it smells the air so fresh up there. You're not in the big city. You're in a small town. Everyone's nice. And, yeah, it's been really nice going up there. So I think my investment was uh, yeah, a, that's a pretty good idea to escape. Um, we we yeah. do the opposite. We, we try to get up to like the mountains and go so, like snowboarding and stuff for the winter. Like That's usually where the folks get their vacation houses and like Big Bear and stuff like that. Yeah. And then on June, for June fourth, I'm or I'm sorry, July fourth, I am going on an Alaska cruise. I get on the ship on the sixth, so nice. that's the way I'm going to get out of the heat this year. I'm going to go to the extreme. I'm going to Alaska, so that should be fun, also. So yeah, you just got to kind of find ways to be creative about it, and just don't stay outside too long. But I will tell you, the year of COVID, it was really bad because, you know, you already can't go outside because it's really hot. Now there's the COVID situation. It, it does make for um, some depressing times, but, you know, you just you got to do what you can do to, to do things inside. And there's a lot of things here that you can do inside that most people don't know about, like inside mini golf. And you can go skydiving in these really tall buildings where they lift you up and there's so many things that you can do here. Like, you know, we have a Great Wolf Lodge that you can go and not be out in the sun. We have water parks. They're actually building a brand new one in um, Glendale. It's a Mattel water park that they're building based on like Mattel cars and Barbie. Mm. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do still outside to stay cool. But for me personally, I just try not to go out in it. That's what I do. But it's a long time. It's like five months that you can't go outside. When I was... Mm. Growing up here, um, and even like as a young adult here, the summer was like three months long, and now it's five to six months long, really. I mean, where you start in the 90s and then you go back to the 90s, it's about five to six months now. And um, global warming is real. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's um, my wife and I, we, I took, I drove my test up there, and so I needed to find superchargers. And so um, I was in that Biltmore area where they have a supercharger by the, there's a mall or something. Yep. And we went there and, oh my gosh, I have never seen a place that has like outdoors, like a sprinkler misting system. Yep. Like how much money do y'all have here to like just cool the air outside? <laughs> <laughs> it was like mind blowing to me. Yep. Or sometimes you'll go to restaurants and they have ceiling fans and I'm like, this does no good. Like. What, you're just rotating the hot air okay. onto people. It's already hot air. What 
what's the point of this? <laughs> yeah, um, we we're we are officially entering summer here in Southern California. Um, I think we hit 84 today, <laughs> but it's hot. It's 84 hot, and my air conditioner is usually just the window. But because I'm doing the recording and I don't want the outdoor noise, I do have the fan on speed to <laughs> to stay cool. <laughs> But that's our AC, like, I, I guess we take that for granted, maybe a little too much. But you went from Santa Monica must have, like, beautiful weather. Oh, yeah. It was what nice. do you not like about Santa Monica that you're like, I'm going to hitch back right back to the valley? Yeah, it happened. Yeah. I, but, yeah, I did love it. It wasn't Santa your Monica. vibe? What's that? Santa Monica just wasn't your vibe? Like, why, why do you leave? I think a- more like California wasn't my vibe. There was an earthquake while I was there, and I was like, "Gotta go now." When the earth moves, summer's not not summer's not in for that. Like summer's not about know. all about the ground shaking. It's not that bad. I w- I got scared actually. I was like, "Whoa!" But summer, I think I probably reasons, been like two hundred earthquakes. I get scared every time. Yeah, I think <laughs> one of the reasons I didn't know this, but I lived in a high rise apartment, and it was on rollers. So when it it tried to you know compensate. But it would roll, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" It was so terrifying. And then I learned that later on, and I was like, "Oh, if I would have been like downstairs, like at the grocery store or something, I wouldn't have felt it that much." But yeah, yeah it was I, a little I, terrifying. I grew up in a single story house, and every time we had an earthquake, um, I wasn't around for the Northridge one, the that really big catastrophic one that hit like in the eighties. But there was a pretty big one, like in night. I must have been like four or five years old and the a from angel stadium tipped over and i lived on the street from angel stadium and i remember like there was a huge blackout and we we're all panicking and like i was just like, such a tiny little kid and like there was no power and i remember like my grandma just yelling like getting getting between the door the door frame and that was it like that was a pretty big earthquake I, that was the only meaningful earthquake that i've experienced where like i have a fond memory of I wouldn't even call it fun. I just have my memory <laughs> of that earthquake. But it'd been around 200 earthquakes at least, right? Uh, um, and and I still remember another earthquake that I remember very vividly was I remember being in an earthquake at, at Boeing when I was in there, and I was like on the sixth floor. And I'm like, I've only ever been on earthquakes on the ground floor. <laughs> I'm like, what am I supposed to do? 60 feet up in the air. <laughs> and then yeah. when I had an earthquake, I had now when I bought a two-story house and I had an earthquake up there, I was like. Crap, I'm not trained for a second story earthquake either. Because <laughs> all those kids were like just stuck and roll, like get on your desk, but like, not when you're upstairs sleeping in your bedroom. Um, but yeah, it still scares me. So so I don't I don't I don't think you gave earthquakes enough time to like ease you in summer. <laughs> sure. That I, I I'll take that. That's true. But the other reason I didn't want to continue living there is every time we left Santa Monica, it would take hours to get places and then the um, apartment that we lived in, it was um, like triple the amount I would have spent on an apartment here. So <laughs> I was like, I actually kind of want to keep some of my paychecks and not give it all to the place I live. You know, just it's, it's funny you say that too because I, I got a job at Google July 2022 and it was for their Santa Monica office. And even though they offered me like close to like half a million dollar total complete package, I told my wife, I'm like, man, if we do this, we're gonna be in like poverty. <laughs> half a million dollar salary. I was like, I so I it, we, I turned it down. I'm like, the numbers just don't add up, guys. Like, I can't move to Santa Monica and not be poor. Like, it just doesn't make sense. So yeah, I, I had a pass on Google for literally the fact that I just didn't want to be poor. <laughs> it's real. The struggle was real. And I yeah. struggled to come back to you because it was so nice living there. I mean, the weather was great and I had a summer without the Phoenix heat and it was so beautiful and nice. And the beach is right there. You can drive up to Malibu and get some pizza and like, oh, it was just amazing living there. But, you know, I didn't, like if I said, I didn't want to. If you do it again, I would recommend like a Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, like yeah. Or- like I would recommend you do try the OC buy before you do. I don't. I I've never been to Santa Monica. I, I avoid LA like the plague, <laughs> whenever I can. But Orange County has a much different vibe. I, I would recommend you check them out next time. All right, I will. If, I'll you, if you have a out. career yeah. opportunity again, <laughs> give we'll Orange see. County beaches a, a or give OC life a chance because it is completely different than LA life. Well, the way that CSAA and AAA treats me, I might not have another career or another place I work. 
this might just be it for me. This might be it. So how yeah, did you? I mean, really, really got a, you know, I a pension. Sorry. I get a pension. Oh, well, then, yeah, you're never going anywhere now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's amazing. The, the AAA is an amazing company to work for. And so CSAA is, a, um, is, a, is not part of AAA, but we are mandated by AAA National, and we um, use our branding. And we sell, we sell their memberships, and they sell our insurance is basically how it works. And so um, it's, a, it's a great company to work for. They have the most amazing benefits, and they treat their employees very well. We're not just like a number in a system. Like they really do care about their employees and their employees are their greatest asset. So, and they make sure that we know that on a, you know, on a recurring basis. That's always so important, especially like in, after 2022 when all these layoffs and tax just started happening, right? It's like, it was more evident than ever that like in my, many, many companies were just a number. Yeah. And, and it's so important when you're, when you are, I, I would say you're very fortunate when you work for a company where like you're a little bit more than beyond just a number. Yeah. That's a the great care point. is really important because when you do work for a company, you're going to do your best work for a company that does legitimately care about you and does provide you benefits for your health and well-being. When you work for a company that is like, well, you're just a number and we're just going to give you the basic of basics. You know, you don't try. I find you don't try as hard. Right. You know, I've definitely been in those situations, and um, I guess you do you do just enough to not get fired. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I personally it, don't do that in my job or in the Atlassian community. Yeah, I I'm very fortunate. Um, I get to do Jira all day, right? And so I I do my stuff. I, I like to tell people, I'm like, I do this Jira stuff for, for I would do it for free at this point because it's fun. It's just. I enjoy solving the Jira problems and I enjoy like modifying workflows and stuff. And like, I get genuine like joy out of doing it. So to me, anytime that I'm working Jira, it's not really a job for me. So um, I'm very excited when I can just work on Jira stuff. <laughs> yeah, me too. And actually coming like for that conversation, I'm actually not an admin. So most community leaders I find are Jira and Atlassian admins and I'm not, I'm a customer. I use Jira every day. I'm a product owner. So I'm writing stories and creating epics and reviewing epics from my product manager and putting stories into sprints and doing validations of what my dev team is doing. And so basically I'm a product owner and I have a dev team of five developers and two QA analysts. And so I keep them going. And so I don't, I come from the perspective of more of a customer than an admin. Um, I don't even know a lot of the admin stuff. So I, I find it interesting because there are a lot of admins out there in the community. And and actually, I would say like just from my perspective, I've not run the data on this, but there most of the people on the community are, are admins, a lot of them, at least leaders. There's a lot of admin leaders. And so um, I find that a lot of people want to talk to me because I am not an admin. I'm a customer. I yeah. actually use the products. <laughs> Uh, just to echo something that's becoming a current re recurring theme in this video here is like you hit something that I think is super valuable, right? Like I think one of the reasons why my videos resonate so well with people as well is because I have videos on like, hey, here's how you add a status and here's how you do X, Y, Z as an admin. But my more popular videos are like, here's how you story point issues. <laughs> here's yeah. how you like make an epic, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like mo more people are more interested in like how do we use this Thing as opposed to how do we admin this thing yeah that's what i do but subjectiveness goes a, is a lot harder to put your face in front of than something objective like adding a status to a workflow yes that's definitely true yes that's yeah because you and i can probably sit in a room we can probably spend a whole week together and we probably walk out with completely different opinions or, or have different ideas of how to achieve the exact same thing yeah, I'm sure we would. Yeah, because you're coming from more of like the admin perspective and I'm coming from more of like the user perspective. Yeah. And not only that, like even if I just came from the user perspective, right? I coming in from the defense world of like military structure and hierarchy and that pecking order of how things and requirements flow versus like however you do your requirement management and stuff like that. So we probably have like just different opinions, which is what makes it harder. But this is why I give my opinions in the videos, because the thing that I find most of the time is that people just don't know. 
and they're just looking for some some help. It doesn't matter if it's the right help, but like some direction, some sense of some orientation of like, how the heck do I create the right epic here? Yeah, for or sure. What goes in an epic? What should be in an epic? Yeah. And what's the difference between an epic and a story? That's that's a really good one because a lot I, of people I have an epic and I'm like, you wrote the epic and the story. Like you didn't have to do my part of it. I could have done it. <laughs> That is something that a lot of teams struggle with. I usually, that's usually where I start off when I start an engagement with someone. I'll start off like defining here's the issue types, here's what you should be thinking from like an initiative perspective, an epic, a story, a task. Because a lot of people, my my biggest like um, pet peeve is the task and the subtask. It's interchangeable. I'm like it, you, you guys, it's not. <laughs> the subtask yeah. is what you think the task is. The task is the sibling of the story. At last, yeah. why do you have to? <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, I know we're out of time here in summer. So thank you so much for taking um, time out of your super busy day. Um, enjoying the heat. I hope you are. <laughs> and um, <It's> possible. <laughs> I appreciate you being here and, and um, hopefully we can come back again next year. Absolutely. Thank now, you. now I want to have that product manager discussion with you. <laughs> totally. We will do that. Yep. All right, Summer. Hopefully I can see you sometime when it's a lot colder in Phoenix. Totally. Thanks, Alex. Bye.